thank you for the introduction. So, um, good. so I'm going to talk about um, a uh, multimodal uh, 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 based uh, fit input for contactless and gesture interaction, pronounced fetish. Uh, from uh, the uh, collaboration with Daniel Sluis Lopes, Felipe Lopes, and Soria Paulo uh, from uh, my lab, our lab in Inesh today, and the Osir Ahe and the Laurent Fries and me come from uh, University of Technique des Eaux de France and uh, INRIA, uh, two uh, um, uh, French academic and research institutions, respectively. So, um, what is the context? Uh, we've been working for a long time in um, uh, um, uh, multimodal interactions and we like to do stuff with our feet, but really that's not the formal motivation. The formal motivation is that we want to, uh, and this has applications to virtual, augmented and uh, mixed reality, we want to provide unconstrained 3D manipulations. Unconstrained means in the sense that you don't have to wear special devices, so we are, we are using uh, vision-based methods, essentially, and contactless interfaces, again, meaning that your hands and feet or body extremities should not be touching anything that might contain germs. So what's the motivation for this? So well, this is a work that we previously done on using a depth camera for kind of uh, uh, applications where you are, uh, people have to visualize uh, uh, imaging data in sterile environments. So you don't want your hands or feet to come in contact with contaminated uh, uh, surfaces. Uh, so the video is not playing. Let's give it a little encouragement. <clears throat> and so uh, this is an early, early prototype. So here you have an, uh, a depth camera. And here you have a uh, former master student uh, uh, working on a simple with a simple gesture vocabulary, you can use a combination of uh, three simple gestures that are easily detected by the hardware that we were using. So, closed fists for grabbing objects, uh, pointing and pinching, uh, essentially, and this, uh, uh, we're using this. So, and you can see the motivation here from using a data set, a 3D data set where you can manipulate cut planes, uh, different points of view, and the scenario that you can imagine is uh, some uh, physician operating on a patient uh, in the theater of operations. This is a scenario, of course. No, uh, no real patients were involved in this work. Um, and uh, where they, they would need to access the uh, uh, volume visualization data set. So this was early uh, work. But what things did we discover? using a depth camera as its advantages and as its problems. So with the depth camera, if you are in the sweet spot or in that range of uh, uh, manipulations where the depth camera also you can resolve your anatomical features, this works well for distant viewing and distant content manipulation. So you can actually make gestures and you can manipulate content with these gestures as you saw on the movie problems here. <clears throat> The depth camera may not be good at recognizing at positions where the ends are either too close to each other or so which prevents some kind of the um, uh, uh, two hand gestures that um, <clears throat> uh, the previous presenter was talking about uh, or when the ends are too close to the body. In that case, the, the skeleton detection algorithms fail sometimes miserably. And this is the most, these are the most interesting problems that we're trying to approach in this um, uh, presentation. Unintended activation. So let's say that you want to scale some object in 3D. And you start making a gesture. You have to gesture for activating the command. And then you have to specify the final dimension of the object. And then you have to release. And when you, will, you, when you release, you don't get the object in the state that you wanted because there was still part of your gesture that was recognized as providing input. Okay. And so it's a problem that affects precision. Okay. And then you have noise input, which also uh, uh, comes as a, a sort of uh, factor uh, here. So uh, 
we are not the only ones that want to publish stuff uh, made with our feet. There are ma many people have worked on this since the night, early 80s. Uh, uh, so uh, early in 1988, people were comparing, were devising already uh, specialized hardware to track the position of the feet that have been foot mice developed for people who have problems at, uh, of accessibility. And uh, more recent work in WISTS, uh, uh, it used a kind of a, a sensor, an IMU mounted on the feet and a cell phone on the pocket to detect foot gestures. And then there has also been lots of vision-based work, including some in my group. This was a fun paper that we published in uh, 2014 in Sikai, where the essential idea was to use a uh, depth camera placed at ground level to detect foot gestures so you could kick the bottom side of your display without having to reach down at the bottom for content. That was fun. <clears throat> and then other people have looked at using hand and foot gestures on tabletop environments. And again, this is the idea that you can both increase the vocabulary or you can use feet as kind of a non-dominant uh, uh, limbs for specialized interactions, for instance. One obvious thing that uh, is the motivator for our research is that you can use the feet to activate or deactivate the command so that you can freeze the gesture where you want the, uh, the, the, the input to finish and then you will activate and deactivate the command based on sole feet interaction and that, that should minimize interaction noise. And other people has, uh, have also used feet as a secondary device, like uh, feet movement between desktop and 3D interaction. And so there's a popularity, a growing popularity in using feet as kind of ancillary input devices. Here is an example, again, motivated by touchless interactions that requires an IMU and a bracelet and a camera-based movement. Interesting project in Germany a couple of years ago. They used a specialized mat that would uh, have resistive uh, uh, um, sensing, so you could sense the position of the feet. The problem with these methods here is that they kind of require people to stand on the same position, which sometimes is okay for a theater of operations. But if the surgeon wants to move around the table, then you have to uh, uh, provide multiple input uh, sensitive surfaces. So. To cut the, the chase, so our gesture vocabulary, actually based on your earlier work, uh, focuses on having three simple gestures that are, by the way, very easy to capture with the uh, uh, left camera. Open hand, closed hand, and the lasso gesture. And for the foot, we use double tap and heel rotation. And we can capture double tap and heel rotation in very different ways. We tried. Uh, optical tracking with a marker on the tip of the foot, so you can actually detect this uh, movement or gesture. We are using in previous work uh, a depth camera uh, to, to place behind the, sur the, the surface, or you can use them, or you can use buttons uh, placed in strategic locations. Again, what you do and what you use depends on how mobile the, the people will remain during the interactions. And then for the interaction design, you'll see how this works. We also want to detect uh, foot rotation, so you can actually use the uh, feet to provide uh, quali quantitative input. Uh, some of the interaction methods use this idea of a clutch mode, where you turn your foot to this uh, quadrant and you activate translation. You turn your foot to this quadrant, you activate rotation. And then you can use the foot in precision mode where you track the angle relative to the um, 12 o'clock to activate, uh, say, rotation or translation arguments. So what is our baseline? Uh, Unconstrained translation, where basically we did the same as we did in the previous um, uh, methods. And this should be playing. Here you see so basically, you map directly the gestures to uh, movements of the object, and then you use special gestures to stop and start the command. So this is what we call CHE, or CHE, contactless hand gesture interaction, and that's the base uh, uh, interaction technique that you could see in the previous method. And you, can, you, you are seeing different uh, 
various um, uh, ways of to interact. Rotate, <coughs> translate a, a, a constraint translation against one axis. And this has to do with other work that we found out that constraint movement was easier to control than uh, unconstrained six degree of freedom movement. So some of that will happens in our um, uh, uh, interaction design. See here you see constraint uh, translation, constraint when I, uh, rotation, constraint to uh, one of three axes, x, y, and z. And you always can see the the dot that represents the the, the point where you grab the thing. And then, then if you pay some attention, you'll notice that there is noise, as you can see from the Kinect directly, and there is this imprecision when you finish and start the movement. Uh, that's what we call the unintended activations. And okay, so this is an constraint translation. And, and, and there you have constraint translation. Okay, clutch fetish. So we use the foot as a clutch. We use the foot to activate either rotation or tra uh, translation or rotation. I don't know if you can see this on the back, but there's a foot menu here with the uh, blue and uh, 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 rose uh, areas. So let's see if this works. Okay, there you go. So you activate, you do a double tap with the foot to activate, and then you select what you want to do, rotation or translation. <clears throat> and use also foot tap to start and stop the, the movement. So here you can see other unconstrained six degree of freedom uh, 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 manipulations. Well, actually three off. <laughs> three degree of freedom rotation, three degree of freedom, of freedom translation to, uh, as well. And then we are, the third interaction method that we are using here is precision fetish, which is uh, using the foot as the way to specify how much to rotate or how much to translate. So again, here, so you have constraint translation, you activate the, the, the menu here, and then you have this zone where you start moving the object with your feet. So first you position your feet in this area and then you move. After you position your feet in this area, you activate uh, a numerical uh, command. And whoops, let me go back a little bit and replay this again in case you did not see. <clears throat> And so you see that there's this kind of threshold area identified in dash uh, thing where, where you start the object and then you have the double tap uh, uh, to uh, start things moving and then you get the foot, you enable the uh, specification of movement and then you control. So you, your arms, well, why are we proposing this technique? Because you can have your hands busy in a surgical environment if you're performing things like minimal invasive surgery, you might want just to use the feet to control the visualization while you're holding, say, a, a probe uh, or uh, and other sur surgical instruments. So, how does this go? So, in the, in the first uh, experiment, we tried rotation with uh, four female participants and five male participants. It is all set up. You have a um, so it's not really immersive uh, VR. You have a big dis uh, large dis scale display where you see the co because you are look. Our idea is that surgeons will not operate with immersive goggles on. Uh, we are not prepared to uh, suffer the consequences of what we would ensue. And so the surgeon will be here. The, this, this large scale display will be some over there. And you have a depth camera here to detect uh, uh, gestures. And here you see the uh, the three techniques and the different conditions so you have the unconstrained movement clutch and precision variant so activated by double tap and then you have can swivel in the case of precision fetish and you tested this with three rotations one along the x-axis y-axis or the z-axis and uh, we did try large and small rotations so the results from this uh, people were a little upset about the unconstrained technique with the foot, uh, so it's just, just ants. And they said it took a lot of time that most fetish because we are asking people to actually achieve precision results. So they had to do multiple attempts and they were a little bit upset. 
As for the clutch method, they found that there was improved accuracy and there were less failed attempts over the, the, the base technique without compromising manipulation time. Better com the, the, the translations were better combined with Z axis without decreasing performance when applied to X or Y axis. So there was a preference for using this clutch technique with the vertical uh, constraint. But <clears throat> clutching came at a, a given cost. So uh, uh, people found out that it, was, it took some more time to activate the command which motivated us in future releases, so we'll talk about that, to consider other activation methods uh, because of problems in, <coughs> in identifying a double tap. Uh, precision fetish uh, gave improved accuracy, but reduced the number of failed attempts over the base technique, but it required lots more time, both in clutching and manipulation, compared to either this technique or this technique. And people find that uh, the precision so we call the precision fetish means that you have to move your foot to achieve numerical displacement. And people consistently found out that using just the arms was really more tiring. Maybe a little bit of the gorilla arm effect that people have talked about in the literature. And these are the, comment, and the comments that we get. Uh, yeah, so it's very tiring, requiring more attempts and gestures to release objects not comfortable. This technique is really tiring, comments. And they found the clutch method to be to have a good com compromise between hand and foot control, and they felt uncomfortable moving the foot or swiveling the foot. Okay, for trans uh, so this was for rotation. Then for translation, uh, we have again the same setup: two rot uh, tra uh, sorry, uh, to translation axis and the translation distance uh, uh, 35 centimeters. Uh, short and 100 centimeters long and again people found that this was like, took less time than the other techniques the unconstrained situation found that the clutch methods provided greater accuracy and because there were less attempts and the manipulation task was simpler than swiveling the, the foot however it required more time than the other than the, than the precision variant so the clutch method had to visit advantages and disadvantage and again people found that precision fetish took more time so uh in the ratings precision fetish decreased in perceived suitability in these coins compared to the unconstrained more hands only movement they found that uh, the cost uh, the hands only movement was uh, producing increasing fatigue and so basically what we found out after these methods is that the constrained movements seem to work better. Contrary to what we saw, the um, uh, foot activated clutch type of thing where you start the, 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 the interaction by tapping the foot and end by tapping it again, took more time. But they provided in the end a better compromise, uh, a trade off between precision and execution time. Based on that, uh, and I'm going to report on things that we are not finding in the VC in digital library because uh, last week we just got the paper accepted in a journal mm -hmm. uh, about applying these techniques to dentistry uh, using touch interaction with, uh, and it's called Tooth Fairy. So we, we, we love uh, fancy acronyms mm -hmm. single foot support for three end cursors for exceptions in dentistry. Dentistry, and here you see an application. I just thought well, I would bring this because it illustrates the kind of operating environment. You see the problem with um, asepsia here. The conditional applications require the dentist to actually be at the keyboard, and you know that the keyboard and the mouse are the things that have the most germs in any kind of operating environment. Uh, uh, so this is really bad. And so our goal is so the one possibility is that they have a foot, but then again, when they're operating uh, here, they are away from the instrument, uh, 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 from doing their, their task. Actually, I'm told by dentists that their, 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 their job is really a stressful one. So here is our setup with the, uh, again, a foot tracked by optical, uh, an optical tracking camera. And then we, we also did try another setup with a real switch, because since there is not much movement here. We thought we could put place a foot switch to activate uh, the, the interfaces. And um, 
And so we, here is a double tap, as you can see, and you can see the search in there uh, uh, manipulating. Uh, and we, we did find also good, uh, good results here, and especially the surgeons that did appreciate the fact that they did not have to take the gloves off or reflect the gloves after uh, interacting with the data set from the patient uh, during an operation. And so, okay. And so this is, an, so the, I, I bring this as an example of an application of the interaction techniques that we developed and presented and validated. So, take home things. Fetish is um, a, a bunch of, uh, it's a set of two foot activated interaction techniques that are used in contactless interaction 3D manipulation. Application, uh, the, our application is mostly in sterile environments, but as free interaction and sterile environment, this can be used for, for uh, extended reality in many different applications. However, <clears throat> we still need to do some work in terms of in, in, um, doing precision uh, placements. We have resisted, okay, well, many design consider uh, This seems to be a simple technique or a simple setting, but it is not achieving a good compromise or a good trade-off between precision, uh, control, and execution time in uh, unconstrained 3D interaction is not easy. And uh, we're not the first ones that have found this uh, one. Uh, so if you're curious about uh, the, the second paper, you can find it in the Journal of Biomedical Informatics at this URL. Um, um, just in case somebody feels the urge. <clears throat> oh, gosh. Okay. Well, if you do not pick it, send me some email and I'll be happy to provide it. And of course, I, uh, <laughs> after the blunder this morning, I would like just to call your attention to the SIGRA Frontiers workshop on the IAVR coming to the conference center near you tomorrow. Thank you for your attention.